Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. And today we're looking at two new iPhone 13s. We've got the 13 Pro in Sierra Blue and the 13 Pro Max in Graphite. I'll do a quick unboxing of the two phones, give you my first impressions, plus the screen protectors that I'm using and the cases that I've gone for. I'll also let you know if it's worth upgrading from the 12 Pro and what the differences are. Now, as I use my iPhone 12 Pro Max to film all of the videos on this channel, it'd be interesting to see if the 13 Pro is any better. So they have a brighter screen, 120Hz support, a smaller notch, better cameras, a macro photography mode, and the new cinematic video mode. I'll also show some examples of these different modes to see what they can do. Next week, I'll be unboxing the normal 13 and the 13 mini iPhone. So if you're interested in those, make sure you drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, and here they are. So just like with last year's iPhone 12, the 13s come in these new thin boxes. And you'll notice there's no plastic wrap this year, so there's no more ASMR unboxing snippets. Instead, there's these little pull tabs at the top and bottom. But comparing the two boxes of the Pro and the Pro Max, they've stuck with the black design, but you can see a size difference here. The Pro Max is noticeably bigger, but we'll compare sizes later. Right, let's start with the smaller Pro model, as I really want to check out that new Sierra Blue color. Wow, this looks really, really nice. It's a lot less blue than I was expecting. It's kind of a very light, almost silver looking blue. It is nice though. This is totally different to the Pacific blue that we saw last year. Then under the phone, we've got the USB-C to lightning cable, the SIM card needle and some Apple stickers. And again, just like last year, there's no charging plug or brick. And here's the Pro Max. Let's get this one opened up. Yep, this looks good. I mean, it's graphite, so it's a pretty safe choice, but it still looks really nice. Obviously, this one comes with the same accessories as the Pro, so I don't need to go over those. And here they are, side by side. Now, what I like about the Pro models is the frosted backs. It's got kind of like a matte finish to them with the Apple logo in the middle. Now, the back is actually glass, and then the band around the outside, well, this is stainless steel. But as the bands are glossy and almost mirror-like rather than matte, they are a fingerprint magnet. So if you're not using a case, you'll probably find these bands are going to be covered in marks and fingerprints and smudges. It's not a huge issue, but it's definitely worth mentioning. Now, the Sierra Blues bands are a lot lighter than the graphite band. They're almost kind of like a more silver color. Okay, let's get these switched on and take a look at the screens. So the iPhone 13 Pros, once again, they come with an OLED or Super Retina XDR display. The Pro has a 6.1 inch screen, while the Pro Max has a 6.7 inch screen. The first thing you might notice is the notch at the top is a little bit smaller, not by much, but it's about 20% smaller. Now the Pro displays come with a brighter screen too, so they actually max out at 1000 nits, that's up from 800 last year. But if you're watching HDR content, well that maxes out at 1200 nits. That's a big jump in brightness, that's nearly 28% over last year. Another new and awesome feature for the Pros is they come with Apple's new Pro Motion 120Hz screen. And I'll tell you what, it is smooth. You're not going to appreciate just how smooth this is through today's video, as you're obviously not watching this in 120Hz. But take my word for it, it is a huge step up from the previous iPhones. This was actually one of the biggest features that I've been looking forward to today. But it's not just a 120Hz screen, it's actually adaptive. This means that it's able to change the refresh rate depending on the content that you're viewing. It can go from 10 hertz all the way up to 120 hertz, which will not only make the experience nicer, it will make a huge difference to the battery use. As if you were running at 120 hertz all of the time, it will drain the battery really quickly. Hopefully we'll see game developers implementing this new 120 hertz feature in their future apps. So first impressions of the screen, it's really nice. It's very bright and obviously the refresh rate is absolutely incredible. So I'm not sure about you, but I always add a screen protector to my phones. The only year that I forgot to add one, I actually went and scratched the screen on day one. So the ones that I've gone for are these. These are called the Spigen and they're the full screen coverage. They're really easy to fit. So all you need to do is line up this plastic case over the front of the phone and you will get a 100% perfect fit. I've actually dropped a link to these in the description. I wasn't sent these. I actually went ahead and bought these, but I thought it's definitely worth recommending these to you. Another thing that I always use with my iPhones are cases. I've used loads of different cases over the years, but I always come back to the Apple ones. They fit well, they're pretty durable, and I like the Apple logo on the back. So I've gone for the Midnight Leather case for the 13 Pro Max, and the Blue Silicon case for the 13 Pro. Now the Midnight case has a very dark blue hint to it. It's not quite as grey or as black as previous versions. But these feel really nice. The silicon case is so soft to the touch. I'm not sure if you can tell, but these cases are very slightly different to the 12 Pro cases. Which means that although they will fit onto the 12s, they won't line up perfectly. So the camera cutout and the button placement on the sides are slightly different. I thought it was worth mentioning just in case you wanted to fit, say, a 13 case to a 12 or a 12 case to a 13. So they will fit, but it won't be 100% perfect. Right, let's take a look at the cameras or the lenses on the back of these phones. So these two pros have exactly the same camera setup. There's no difference at all. 
And these lenses are actually bigger than last year's Pros, not just the lenses themselves, but the square is bigger. The three lenses that we have include the ultra wide, the wide and the telephoto. Now, as I mentioned before, and if you didn't know already, I do film every video on my channel using my iPhone. I actually made a video about that earlier this year. So although I'm upgrading to the latest iPhone, it's not just about getting the latest phone. For me, it's about getting the best camera I can from an iPhone. All three lenses are 12 megapixels. Now the wide lens has an f1.5 aperture. It's a faster sensor and will do a better job of handling dark areas. Now this is the main camera that's used and it's a 26 millimeter focal length. The few photos that I've taken with it have come out really well. It's so sharp and the colors look awesome. The ultra wide has an f1.8 aperture with a 13 mil focal length. This gets a super wide looking shot. It's not a lens that I use that often, but when I do, it's nice to create a different perspective. The ultra wide has now got autofocus, which you didn't have before. So yeah, this looks really, really good. Then finally, we've got the telephoto lens, and this is an f2.8 aperture with a 77 millimeter focal length. This lens is awesome for creating depth of field or portrait shots. And again, it is incredibly sharp. But what's great about these cameras is they all have a stabilization built in. It's using Apple's sensor shift technology. Now we did see this in last year's 12 models and it's made a huge difference when taking photos. Another new feature is the macro photography option. So this is something that Apple talked about. So you're now able to take photos as close as two centimeters from an item and the camera will automatically change into that mode. So there's no setting or option to choose from like you do with say portrait or panoramic. It does it all by itself. And a few photos that I've taken already with this macro photography mode have come out really sharp. I mean, it's probably not a mode that I use that often, but I've got to appreciate just how good it looks. So here, for example, I've zoomed in on a bottle of gin and you can see the fabric of the label as well as the little writing. And this is so tiny. So you could have a lot of fun with this mode. So here's another example. This is the DualSense controller for the PlayStation 5. Now, we all know that on the back of the controller, you've got these tiny little icons, but it's only when using this macro photography mode, you can really see them in the detail. Then other modes it includes things like portrait, panoramic, night mode and HDR. We've obviously seen these before on previous phones, so I don't really need to go over those in detail. Night mode is even better this year as it's able to take photos faster with that new sensor. That means less time holding the phone still trying to get that night shot. Now onto the video recording modes. So these new modes are the main selling points for the 13 and probably the main reason I wanted to upgrade. Okay, first up is this cinematic mode. Now I need to spend a little bit more time playing around with this, but it allows you to create videos using a similar effect to what you see in portrait mode. It works on both the front and the rear facing cameras as well as the wide and the telephoto lens. You can focus on one person or subject, and while you're filming, you can change that focus point just by tapping the screen. It adds an insane amount of bokeh or depth of field here, and it's incredibly impressive. So if I'm focusing on one item here and I want to change it, I can very, very easily. But not just while I'm filming, you can actually change the focus point after I've finished filming. So here's a video that I've already filmed, but I want to change the focus point to something that wasn't in focus at the time. And I can do this straight from the camera roll. All I need to do is press edit and I can actually change that from the video itself. Now this is absolutely awesome. It's such a cool feature. However, there is one downside to this mode, something that for most people probably won't be an issue. It actually records the cinematic mode at 1080p at 30 frames per second. To give you an idea, I film all of the videos on this channel at 4K30. So if I was to only use the cinematic mode, I would be reducing the quality of my videos. I will try to use this mode in future videos, but I guess the 1080p limitation will hold me back. And onto another new feature, which is exclusive to the Pro models, and that's ProRes Video. This will actually allow you to record up to 4K 30 frames per second in a lossless video format. This is like taking photos on the iPhone using RAW. You're going to get so much more detail and an overall better quality video. But with this format, the file sizes are likely going to be massive. ProRes isn't available yet, and it's something that Apple have said that we will be seeing later this year. I'm actually really looking forward to testing this mode out, especially on the videos I create for this channel. Let's have a look at some of the specs for these two iPhone 13 Pros. So the battery life on these two have actually increased since last year. The Pro Max is 28 hours now, up from 20 hours, while the Pro is 22 hours, up from 17 hours. I've obviously not had these long enough to see if that's true, but over the next couple of weeks or so, I'll be able to test it out. Okay, looking at the two storage options that I've gone for. So both Pros are available in a 128, 256, 512, and a terabyte. I've actually gone for the 256 on the Pro, as that's the one my wife will be using. And I've gone for the one terabyte option on the Pro Max for myself. This is going to make a huge difference for me for filming my videos. And along with that two terabyte iCloud storage I have, this is going to be a solid combo for creating content. But price wise for the two, the 256 Pro comes in at £1,049 or $1,099. 
whereas the Pro Max 1TB comes in at £1,549 or $1,599. A quick look at the size and the weight, so the Pro is the same height and width as the 12 Pro, it's just a little bit thicker and weighs a little bit more. In fact, it's 203 grams instead of 187 grams. The same for the Pro Max, the height and the width are exactly the same, but the thickness and weight have increased over the 12. It's now 238 grams instead of 226. So what's the difference between the 13 Pros and the 12 Pros? Well, colour-wise, we've now got the Sierra Blue instead of the Pacific Blue, but the main differences this year include the Pro Motion screen, which is 120Hz, the Cinematic Mode, a new A15 chip, Pro Res, and the larger and better cameras. So to be honest, if you're not interested or need the faster refresh rate or the new and improved cameras, the 12 is not that much different. But this screen and camera modes for me is definitely worth the upgrade. So that was a quick unboxing and look at the new iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. Will you be buying one of these? And if you are, which color will you go for? And if you've got any questions at all about these two iPhones, please drop those in the comments. Now, as I did purchase these phones, I was not sent these two phones. I will be using these long term and I will be able to give you my honest opinion as I go. I'm really happy with the colors and the specs that I've gone for, and I'm looking forward to creating new videos with it over the coming weeks. And remember, if you want to see more iPhone 13 content, like the 13 and the 13 mini unboxings, make sure you stick around on the channel. Well, you've just made it to the end of today's video, so thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.